the field teams must focus their search for signs around locations where signs are most likely to be found. Waterholes, game trails and forest roads are some examples of such locations. Apart from detecting and recording signs, field workers should also collect photographic evidence of tracks for later verification. They should collect scat samples as per the prescribed survey protocol. Please note that it is possible that some signs that are present in a cell may go undetected. Not detecting any signs could mean either that the tigers are not present in the area or that they are there but were not detected during the survey. Therefore, as with line transect and camera trap sampling methods discussed in earlier chapters, occupancy surveys also involve the issue of detectability. This issue of detectability is dealt with during analysis using information from replicates. Once all the cells on the map have been walked, a clear picture will emerge of the proportion of habitat occupied by tigers in the entire landscape. Not only will the data tell us where tigers are present, but we will also be able to determine which areas are used intensively and which areas are used sparsely. So, the three key questions that habitat occupancy surveys answer are 1. What proportion of the habitat in the overall landscape is occupied? 2. How does the intensity of habitat use vary across the landscape? And 3. How does occupancy in a large landscape vary over time? Occupancy surveys, if conducted once every few years, provide valuable information for tiger conservation. They can tell us whether new populations are getting established and whether habitat used by animals is shrinking or expanding. If our conservation and management efforts are successful, in the long run, the proportion of occupied habitat can be expected to increase. If conservation efforts fail, this proportion will decline. Cell sizes will change depending on the species being assessed. It is essential, therefore, that some information about expected home range sizes of the animals being surveyed is available and that it is incorporated into the survey design. In the earlier example of a tiger occupancy survey, we had taken the cell size to be 200 square kilometers. That is because the maximum home range for tigers in the example area Karnataka is known to be 150 square kilometers. But in the case of a prey species like the muntjac, which has a home range of only about 3 square kilometers, a much smaller cell size, say about 5 square kilometers, will need to be used. For larger prey animals like gaur, the cell sizes can be 15 square kilometers. In summary, occupancy surveys allow us to monitor the status of tigers and their prey at large landscape scales, such as entire countries or large regions within a country. The main goal of an occupancy survey is not to find out how many animals there are in a landscape, but to determine where those animals are distributed in the landscape. Occupancy surveys help us determine what proportion of the landscape is occupied by tigers and their prey. Occupancy surveys do not require advanced equipment or technical skills. They can be done by people with basic field skills. During occupancy surveys, it is not necessary for field workers to actually see the animals or capture them in camera traps. It is enough if they detect and record the signs left behind by animals such as tracks, dung and scats. It is very important that field workers are able to correctly identify the signs. They should photograph the signs for later verification by a supervisor 
and collects cats as per the scat collection protocol given to them. All signs should be recorded on appropriate occupancy survey data forms. Grid cell sizes should be determined according to the animal being surveyed. Tiger occupancy surveys will need large cell sizes. Prey occupancy surveys, on the other hand, require smaller cell sizes. In order to determine grid cell sizes, some information on expected home range sizes of the animals being surveyed is essential. When walking within a cell, field workers should follow a predetermined survey route. They should not walk at random in the habitat. The survey route is divided into equal length segments that are considered to be replicates and each type of animal sign is recorded only once per segment. Field workers should search for signs in the most likely places such as salt licks, water holes, game trails and forest roads. Whenever signs are encountered, the location of the signs should be recorded with the help of a handheld GPS unit. When a GPS unit is not available, one can use a map and compass technique for recording the location. For more information about occupancy surveys and sampling, please refer to chapters 4, 5 and 6 of the manual, Monitoring Tigers and Their Prey by K. Ullas Karanth and James D. Nichols, as well as the occupancy survey designs provided separately.